All right, today we're jamming over a minor blues track. Everything you need to know about this track is in the video description. Um, there's a chart that shows uh, the chords we're using, the shapes we're using, the structure of the jam, and more importantly, the scale shapes that we're going to use to solo over on the top of this. Uh, it's a very simple jam, and it's very easy to sound great on top of a track like this. So I'm going to show you the first simple thing you can do. Uh, you might be able to guess it's in pentatonic minor, but don't worry, we'll go past pentatonics in this video. So as I've explained before, what we're going to do is find A on the 6th string on the 5th fret, and then we can just play the shape, pentatonic minor. And uh, what I'm going to do this time is I'm only going to focus on these four notes right here on the 3rd string. And on the fourth string, those four little notes here, fifth fret, seventh fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. And I'm literally only going to play those notes for my first guitar solo. Uh, this is an interesting exercise, and you'll see why for a few different reasons. Um, you have to be a little more creative when you can use less notes, because you can't go crazy. You can't just go up and down. You have to start thinking about when to play the note, as opposed to just what note to play. You get to start thinking about, should I slide up to the note? Should I slide down? Should I do a pull-off to that note? Um, should the note be staccato, legato? You know, these are kind of questions that are hard to ask yourself when you're thinking about shapes and you're flying all over your fretboard. But since we're only working with four, four little notes, we can really spend the time to think about what we're doing, and it'll make a big difference in the sound of our playing. Um, so I'm going to play four notes, and the only other thing I'm going to do here for this solo is a pre-bend on the third string. So what I'm doing on the third string, on this note, I'm going to bend the note before I even pick it, like this. Then I'm going to pick the string and let the bend fall. This is a very uh, effective little tool here, and it, it kind of, it's hard to describe the emotional content of this, but you'll feel it. It's very kind of depressing, kind of smooth, and uh, just a little, uh, a little heartbreaking. But take a listen to how it sounds when we put it in context here. So... Um, once again, all I'm doing is playing four notes and one pre-bend, and check out how good this is going to sound. So that pre-bend is wonderful. And God, I mean, I'll use that all day over a jam like this. Um, one thing I would advise you to do is really spend the entire jam just playing those four notes. It's a very, very good practice, and I swear to you that you're, you're going to be forced to work in a part of your brain that you might not be working when you're thinking lead guitar. And that's the difference between, you know, making your lead guitar sound good. It doesn't matter how many shapes you know. It doesn't know how many scales you know. What matters is how do you play those things. So when you, when you get rid of all the clutter and when you stop thinking about all the shapes and you can just focus on four little notes, then you can start really focusing on how they sound, how they feel, and what it comes across when somebody's listening to it. Okay, our next step would be to add in a little bit of the Dorian scale. Uh, the Dorian scale is a tricky scale to use. Um, the shape's going to be very convenient here. Uh, what we're going to do is just 8th fret, 7th fret, 5th fret, 8th fret, 7th fret, 5th fret, 7th fret, 5th fret. And then if you want to continue, you can slide down on the next step. Essentially, A Dorian is the same thing as G major, so if you want to think of this as being in the G major scale, you can think of the shape as just using the G major shape. Um, but really, if you look at how it connects to pentatonic, it's very simple here. That's Dorian, and here's pentatonic. So all the notes of pentatonic minor are also in Dorian, but Dorian has extra colors, extra notes we can grab. Um, and that'll be a problem over a lot of the chords. Actually, it'll be a problem over every single chord, except A minor 7. But since most of this jam uses the A minor 7 chord, that means I can use Dorian over most of the jam. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play pentatonic minor over uh, pretty much the entire thing, but over the A minor 7 chords, I'm going to grab a lot of these notes from the Dorian scale, or the G major scale, whatever you want to think of it as, and then you'll see me switching back and forth between those two shapes. Dorian. 
back to pentatonic. Pretty cool, right? And you can, I mean, you can totally feel the difference between the Dorian scale and the pentatonic scale. They kind of contrast each other. Every time I feel that that uh, note from Dorian, it's uh, in this case it's an F sharp, and it's the natural sixth note in uh, the A minor scale. Adds a lot more brightness to what's normally a pretty dark scale. Okay, so the last thing here, uh, I completely ignored the fact that you can use the A minor scale over almost this entire jam. Um, there's going to be one problem, though, is when the E7 chord comes up. You can't play the A minor scale over E7. You'll have to play A harmonic minor instead. And the reason for that is just because E major, or E7, has this note G sharp in it. And there's no G sharp in the key of A minor. So when we were doing, if we play the entire A minor scale, you will not run into a G sharp. So what we have to do is we have to sneak in a G sharp for that E7 chord. Anytime that E7 chord comes up, we're going to just grab a little bit of G sharp there. We can do it here underneath our A on the first string. We could do it here underneath A on our fourth string. We could do an A right underneath A on our sixth string, but you're probably not going to be soloing down here. So what you're going to hear me do is you're going to be hearing me play uh, A minor. I'm going to play the A minor scale all the way through this entire jam, except when that E7 chord comes up. When E7 comes up, I'll grab just a little bit of G sharp, and that'll essentially be me playing an A harmonic minor. I don't have to play up and down the entire harmonic minor shape just to say I'm playing in harmonic minor. I just need a little bit of that scale. So let's check out that, all right? A minor, start to finish, and then whenever E7 comes up, I'll be playing a little A harmonic minor instead. going to come up here, right here, and now I'm back to the A minor scale, all right? Still staying in A minor, lots of pentatonic. G sharp for the F mid E7 chord right here. Alright, one more time and you'll hear that uh, E7. Lots of pentatonic minor, some minor scale. Okay, and then here's gonna come that E7 chord, I'll play the G sharp. You hear the effect of that? A lot more exotic. There's a lot of flair. There's a lot of spice. Anytime you enter uh, uh, that dominant five chord, or you play a little harmonic minor, you're gonna get that kind of that zest going on. So it's nice to spice things up. I wouldn't really recommend it every single time, uh, but certainly to change the sound up from just you know regular pentatonic minor, I think it makes a big difference. So hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it helps.